Hi, Pradeep. Thank you so much for joining us today and wish you and your team all the very best for an exciting new fund launch of your retirement fund, NFO. Uh, but before I get into uh, you know details on that, I'm just curious to understand. I was you know looking at the sort of fund launch calendars of various AMCs and the last couple of years have been very, very busy for most AMCs. You've adopted a slightly different tack in terms of your fund launches. You had a you know, um, uh, a liquid and a, and a fixed income fund, but you didn't really jump into the bandwagon on equity hybrids like others did. Uh, what was, what's the thinking on fund launches at Union? Um, first of all, thank you, Vijay, uh, for the opportunity to chat up with you once again. Yes. Always a pleasure. Um, yes, and um, it's it's uh, it's been uh, quite some time since uh, we had uh, NFOs. In fact, uh, the entire 21-22, uh, uh, we did not launch any new fund. And uh, this year, we, we just launched a guilt fund. Okay. So our, our thinking has always been that uh, we launch a fund when we at least believe that um, uh, it adds value to our investors and uh, distributors. Mm -hmm. So launching an NFO just for the heck of it has not been uh, a strategy that we have followed. And uh, last year, uh, for pretty much for the whole of 21-22, the view from our uh, investment team has been that um, the market equity markets uh, were uh, expensive compared to the underlying fair They were bang on. They were bang on, absolutely. Uh, well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so it was not easy to stick to that uh, position because uh, we were sort of proved wrong in the short term, market continued to rally, although we believed it was expensive. Um, the industry launched a lot of NFOs and people raised money. We lost on that business opportunity. But our thinking was that if we don't believe that investors will make money, then let's not do it. Right. So that is that reflected in our uh, position in our balanced advantage fund also, where we stayed at 30% for considerable time equity. Um, so this year, we have seen the valuations becoming more reasonable. There was a time when valuations were actually attractive market was at a discount to fair value. Now it has again gone back to a, a slight premium in uh, our view. But we believe that um, the time has come again when we can offer uh, differentiated products. So we launched the guilt fund because we believed that um, over the next three years, there is uh, a very good chance for investors to make uh, reasonably good returns um, from from guild fund given the uh, current interest rate situation and the outlook for interest rates over the next three years. Now, retirement fund is something that um, you know we have been working on for um, a considerable time, and um, we thought and and it's not something that is you know uh, directly linked to any kind of timing of the market is there for a different purpose. So when we got the opportunity and the approval, we said, yes, let's let's launch this fund. Okay. So I, I also noticed that uh, there's actually a much wider canvas that you're attempting to paint beyond just the product launch. You're actually attempting to start a movement, kind of, uh, which you're calling renewment, and you're talking about the need to embrace renewment planning. So what is renewment and you know how is that linked to retirement? Well, that's that's a very, very interesting aspect of what uh, what we are uh, projecting uh, currently, Vijay. Mm -hmm. So um, the traditional view of retirement is like, you know, you have worked for a long time and, um, you know, now it's uh, either you are forced to stop working or you choose, you know, that enough is enough. And then after that, it's like, you know, most people traditionally thought that you put up your feet and take things easy, uh, look after your grandchildren or, you know, get into spirituality, whatever. Uh, but I think, you know, that uh, view has undergone considerable change. Mm -hmm. So the the gen next, as you call it, you know, and, and I would say, you know, you and I would probably uh, be Not part of that. that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but, but, um, you know, we are not today looking at uh, retirement in the traditional sense. So, you know, it is not like life, as you know, stops at 
uh, say 55 or 58 or 60, and then you wonder what you do, mm -hmm. right? That is not the way people are looking at uh, retirement now. So it is about, you know, you do certain things, you know, for part of your life. But most people today and, you know, the, the, the new generation especially, so they have a certain passion that they want to pursue. Right? It can be music, it can be cooking, it can be, you know, a hundred other things. Yeah. But it's possible that you you need to have a, a professional career, you know, after your studies, you, you undertake certain, uh, you know, work for commercial reasons. But people always have a, fa a passion that they would like to pursue. And very often, it is a question of achieving a certain level of financial freedom. Uh, before you can pursue your passion. Now, what we are saying is that it is not about retirement. You are not retiring. You are just renewing your life. It's it's another life, right? And something that you would enjoy as much as you enjoyed the earlier part or even more, right? So you stop, you know, working because you had to work to earn money. You pursue what you are passionate about. You, you renew yourself, yeah. right? You may make money in the process, but you're not doing it to make money. You achieve certain level of financial independence, financial freedom. You pursue, pursue your passion and it's a different life. Somebody who has been, you know, um, an engineer may suddenly realize that he's, he's extremely good as a chef. It's possible. It, so this is what we mean by renewment. It is a new life. You renew yourself. Right. Get into something that is a lot more exciting, something that you are passionate about, and you don't have to worry about the financial part. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a very, very powerful concept, no doubt about it. And, you know, very apt for the current times where, where people are looking at freedom to choose what to do rather than being dictated by uh, financial requirements kind of a thing. Now, I, th I guess a big... Um, challenge for you and your team is uh, how do you drive this messaging around renewment and therefore as a corollary, renewment planning? Uh, how do you drive that messaging among the intermediation community, among investors beyond, let's say, just the fund launch where there will obviously be a lot of decibel around it? Of course, um, Vijay, launching, you know, the retirement fund is just, just one part of the whole journey. Right. We are, what we are trying to um, achieve um, over a period of time is to have a wider and more active conversation around this whole concept of renewment. You know, give get people to talk about it and the next step is they will start planning. They will start doing something about it. The first step is to have the conversation around this concept of renewment. We don't want people to think of retirement as, as a kind of dreaded event in their life which is a way traditionally it has been projected that you retire, you stop earning, then your expenses are still there. You may live for considerable time. How do you survive? Children may look after, they may not look after you. <laughs> what do you do? We, we, mm -hmm. we want to tell people that it need not be like that, yeah. right? If you, if you plan this properly, that part of your life can be a lot more exciting and, and enjoyable than your earlier part. Okay, so what we plan to do in this whole process is, yes, we are starting with the fund, but that's not the, the end of it. So we will initiate a series of measures to get the conversation going around the concept of uh, renewment by distributors, by all stakeholders, by investors, et cetera. And, and this will happen through uh, a lot of, you know, digital activities that we will initiate. Um, so... We have commissioned uh, a research also uh, to study, you know, the, you know, what are the what are the insights that we can get. So this is a long journey as far as we are concerned, and launching a fund is just the first step in that. Okay, that's that's very reassuring. Coming to the product itself, Pradeep, uh, you know, and I'm playing a little devil's advocate on behalf of let's say some uh, MFDs and RIAs who believe that retirement planning can as well be done without going to a retirement fund. Uh, instead, you go to an existing equity or balance fund or whatever, which has a solid track record and which does not have the lock-in 
period that is normally associated with retirement funds. And they believe they can do it just as well. Uh, in which case, what is really the case for a specialist retirement fund with this lock-in which some people perceive is onerous? I think uh, that's, that's one of the, the most uh, pertinent questions in the minds of many people. Uh, we would be the first to admit that um, you don't need a retirement fund to plan for your re retirement, mm -hmm. right? Um, you can you can do it through um, one or more of uh, the existing products available in the market. It's it's very much doable. But what is doable and what actually gets done could be very different things in life, right? So while the possibility is always there that you can plan using you know other open-ended funds. Open-ended funds' biggest strength also turns out to be their biggest weakness, mm -hmm. that they are open-ended, open right? Yeah. So, so it is like, you know, just because the door is open, sometimes you feel like going out, <laughs> okay? When, when, you know, say, for example, uh, there is bad market for six months, one year, or even two years. It is very easy for people, at least some of the retail investors, to get uh, swayed by it panic and get out, right? Which is one of the worst things that you can do with your money, that you, you get out when the market is bad, right? So the level of discipline and maturity that is required by investors and distributors to stay invested and especially to ensure that, you know, you don't sell your investments at the worst possible time. That ability, you know, as long as that maturity is not something that we can take for granted. And clearly we have not seen that in, in abundance in our market. You and I both have seen this over the last so many years. Okay. While the market has done very well, uh, funds have performed extremely well. Very few investors have actually benefited from that kind of growth. So what we are uh, telling people is that while you can do this, achieve the same result with existing funds, the retirement fund provides certain discipline which is very essential to achieve your goals, Correct. right? Somebody, somebody has to make sure that you stay on track. Now, in the retirement fund, there is a built-in restriction which forces you to stay on track. So that is all that we are saying, that sure. if you stay invested for five years, I think there is very little chance that you will not make money. Yeah, and there's but very little in this chance five, that, uh, yeah, absolutely. No, and, and, and in that five years, it is very possible that you can have one extremely bad year where a large number of people may get scared and walk off. True. We no, and prevent... I, I guess the other thing that people have noticed is if five years that, you know, the door was closed and people have had a good experience. When you open the door in the sixth year, very few people run out because they now, you know, it's become part of their portfolio. They got used to seeing it there and seeing it. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. You're right, Vijay. That's our thinking. So, you know, there's the other uh, aspect that uh, is very noteworthy in your new retirement fund, which is um, you've gone with just one option, which is pure equity, a okay, wealth creation option, which is in contrast to some of your peers, you know, where retirement funds have come either with different asset allocations and then the investor chooses whether they want conservative, balanced, aggressive, etc. Or some which have one more layer of auto sort of rebalancing based on life stage and so on and so forth. You've chosen to go away from all of those asset allocations and say it's equity, wealth creation, pure and simple. What's the thinking behind that? So um, we, we as a fund house and I as an individual, we believe that, you know, uh, the simplest things are often the best. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't have to complicate something, you know, let's not. Right? So what is the objective of the retirement fund? It is to help people to create wealth, give them certain level of financial, um, you know, freedom, independence, so that this whole concept of renewment, uh, you know, becomes achievable for uh, people who plan for it, right? If that is an idea, we believe equity is the best tool to create that wealth and achieve financial freedom, yeah. right? There is no need in our opinion to complicate this and you know, uh, introduce a number of options, which 
for a variety of reasons, which you know I don't want to go into now, but we believe can be suboptimal for investors, even from a wealth creation uh, point of view. And at the same time, what we are also telling people is that you know there is there is um, the traditional belief that uh, retirement you know is something that happens when you are 55 or 60, etc. We are also driving the concept that you know forget the traditional retirement. Mm -hmm. In the concept of renewment, renewment can happen when you are 40, when you are 45, 35. Okay, if you plan when you are 25. You know, by 40, 45, you can be completely independent and you can have that renewment. So it is not meant only for, you know, people in the later phase. Uh, it's it's meant for people of really all ages. True, absolutely. So, you know, there's one other thought, um, Pradeep, and not really related to this particular product because this is more of an accumulation product. But as an industry, we seem to have done rather well for ourselves in giving products and solutions that help people accumulate money. But we continue to be uh, very uncompetitive versus, let's say, insurance and FDs in the distribution phase, which is when you finally stop earning and now you're looking at drawing down from the accumulation and you're looking at a retirement income or a renewment income or, uh, you know, a fixed uh, sort of SWP as we uh, in our industry uh, like to call it. We've had SWP as a concept for years, for decades, but we've not really made inroads in the retirement income space. Why is that? And what do we need to do different? I think um, you know there is there is uh, a much greater level of uh, education that we need to do as an industry, right? Why why are FDs and insurance products uh, more popular in in that space in the distribution space? Is like you said, you know, people like to have certain level of uh, predictability about you know the returns now if we can demonstrate and and this is easily demonstrable uh, through experience and all the past record that we have that if you plan you know reasonably well in advance and if the accumulation part is handled properly in the distribution phase through swp you can achieve pretty much the same level of predictability that you are seeing in FDs or uh, insurance products. Of course, we cannot guarantee a certain you know, uh, rate of return, but it is, it is very logical to make certain assumptions and projections about the possible uh, you know, returns that you can get from such a strategy. But I think what we need to do as an industry is put a little more thought into this and find ways of popularizing the concept of SWP in the distribution phase Absolutely. and and we see a lot of opportunity um, to make progress there i mean one thought that while you were speaking i was just wondering in our, our industry is doing a lot in terms of these target date debt index funds the longer term horizon what is stopping us from actually uh, packaging one of those as a retirement income solution and have an swp of five or six percent on that because there is visibility of returns there and so on and so forth you're right i mean we have to just apply our mind and come up with solutions that offer that predictability, that visibility of, of income. Our industry has those solutions. We are just not sort of putting it together. Hopefully, yes. the mutual fund will take the lead on that. Uh, at least, you know, we are hoping that uh, we will we will get the conversation going and we right. will get a lot of, uh, you know, active minds to think about it and start working on it. Uh, it's a job for the entire industry, all stakeholders, but we'll be very happy to, you know, make our own uh, yeah, humble contribution. Wonderful. Great. Thank you so much, Pradeep. Uh, all the very best to you and your team for um, a very successful NFO and more importantly for catalyzing the conversations around renewment. It's clearly an idea whose time has come and it's about time all of us embrace, uh, you know, truly the notion of renewment planning rather than retirement planning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you very much.